Well, good morning, everybody. As I said, I'm Greg Borman. Um, here from Nature Alberta, and we're talking about the Living by Water project. Um, so just for a show of hands, how many people have heard or used the Living by Water project in the watershed? Okay, I'll be brief on the explanation then. Um, so we started about 13 years ago in Alberta. It was a BC coastal initi initiative to start out, um, and the main goal is to help out waterfront residents employ kind of best management practices. Um, we try to emphasize and teach people that it's the cumulative impacts of all these, you know, a little fertilization here, a little bit of taking out the shoreline there. We're trying to emphasize that those together are gonna be bad for the lakes. Our main focus is, uh, is on a person-to-person -person scale. So we're looking at a super minute scale um, and we do a home site consultation. Um, so what that looks like is we get trained shoreline advisors. Uh, they're usually university students or graduates that come out um, that are trained in environmental disciplines. And then we also provide further training about kind of lake management and, and other things that pertain to uh, the environments around the lake. Um, we use them to go out to community events, um, to presentations around lakes, um, and we try to promote the project to lakes. Um, if successful, we get people that are interested in having us come out to their properties, and then we do a look around their property. We look at the buffer zone, we look at the built structures that they have, look at the yard, house, and boating. And after all those are seen, we talk about kind of what they are doing right, what they're doing wrong, and how they can improve. Um, so we give rec recommendations on property, and then we make a report that kind of outlines all those um, BMPs that they could be using on their property. Um, and it is confidential and free. Um, so our, we've been growing for about 12 years. A um, little bit of a rocky start, but now we're starting to kind of figure out what's working for us, what's not working for us. Um, the red line is how many consultations we've had uh, total. The blue line is the annual number of consultations. You can see we've had a little bit of dip in the last couple of years because we've lost people at the beginning of the summer. So starting off with four and then moving down to three because somebody got another job opportunity. So that might be doesn't tell a great story, but um, so far we've done about 750 consultations um, and we've been working at about 30 lakes in Alberta. Um, another thing that we do to kind of continually support the people that we've already met with is we do a two-year follow-up. Um, so we come to, back to the property two years down the road, we see uh, what has been implemented on the property, what's worked for them, what hasn't worked for them, um, and we've done those follow-ups at about 119 of the properties since 2007. Um, I'll skip over that in that last little bit. Um, so we've had seen some successful things. Um, the blue in this diagram is the initial consultation. The red is the follow-up consultation, so two years down the road. Um, we've seen a tiny drop in the amount of retaining walls. That's kind of a tricky one to change for a lot of residents. However, um, softening those hardened structures, um, they've talked about uh, riprap on shorelines. So we're seeing people letting um, native vegetation grow into that so that it's softening some of the wave erosion. Um, turf grass, we've seen reduction in turf grass up to the, proper, or up to the water's edge. And then for the, the three last uh, bars are sparsely vegetated areas, clumped, shrubs and trees, and densely vegetated areas, and we've seen an increase in all three of those. So we're seeing positive results um, on the kind of uh, shoreline composition. Um, we're also seeing positive results in what they're using in their yards. So uh, we, we check if they're using pesticides or fertilizers, and we've seen large reductions in both of those as well. Um, and then we also look at kind of household practices. So are they using phosphate-free soaps? Um, as we know, it's going right into a septic system maybe, or if not, it's going into a holding uh, 
holding pond still in the watershed. So we're seeing that there's more people using uh, phosphate-free soaps, uh, less people using septic enzyme additives, and less mi minusculely smaller amount of people using harsh chemicals, people like leach. Um, so the future of the, the project, what we would like to see, we, we know it's a successful project. Um, it's, it's worked kind of sporadically in the further out watersheds, um, but it's difficult for us to reach Lesser Slave or reach way down to Siwa and stuff like that. Um, so we'd like to see collaboration with the WPACs, getting, um, getting the program into the WPACs or having WPAC people trained with us or any, any way that we can kind of help out this progress and, and have collaboration. Um, we applied for a grant, a land use grant with um, North Saskatchewan, Battle and Red Deer River um, and failed to get that. However, we're still looking uh, for funding to go ahead with this collaboration with a lot of the WPACs.